Hello and welcome to Face Off here on France 24. Last weekend was Congress time for the ruling Socialist Party. After weeks of tension, the party managed to avoid a nasty split between the supporters of the president and the government and those who criticized his perceived tilt towards the right. But those disagreements are still simmering and could hurt the re-election prospects of François Hollande in 2017. With me on the set, Jean-Marc Gonin with the Figaro magazine and Stéphane de Vries, who is the Paris correspondent of the Dutch TV station RTL4. So in the western town of Poitiers last weekend, the socialists held their congress and the point meant was the prime minister himself, Manuel Valls. Manuel Valls's job at his party's political congress was to paint a unified picture of the socialist party. He began by praising his boss. We should also be proud of the president. With courage, he embodies the voices of France. Even if Vals is more popular in the polls than Hollande, the competition wasn't at home, but across party lines, with the newly renamed Republican Party and its leader, Nicolas Sarkozy. Behind the rebranding of the UMP party, there hides an abysmal lack of ideas. Being a politician is about serving others and not settling personal scores. It's about making your country better and not hunkering down with aggressiveness and excess. Given how he treats those who disagree with him, Nicolas Sarkozy is already a problem for our country. Unlike the Republicans' summit where politicians were booed, the left's gathering went off without a hitch. I watched the Rights Congress with everyone on camera saying, we are the Republicans, but they were fighting behind the scenes. We are united, which isn't making journalists happy. It's boring for you. So what else could we do? Watch the French Open. That's where the competition is. Here, we're united. But everything may not be as hunky-dory as it seems. Valls is speaking to half the Socialist Party, specifically those that are happy with the government. But there's another half that's not happy, and I think we can't just say to them, be patient. Divisions that will inevitably emerge as France gets closer to its 2017 presidential elections. And divisions that were uh, on display uh, with an op-ed penned uh, by a former Socialist Minister, Arnaud Montebourg, who... Uh, basically blasted the government and saying uh, the uh, president was headed in the wrong direction and France was really in deep uh, trouble. Uh, so on the surface, the socialists managed to stay united. There was no big division for our viewers. In the past, Congresses for the Socialist Party have sometimes been very, very rowdy. This time, at least, they managed to stay united. Uh, the image is there. Well, that's maybe because a lot of uh, party, the members of the Socialist Party are not members anymore. They just uh, didn't pay any, uh, their membership anymore, so the party shrunk. And maybe that's the hard core that stayed uh, in the party. The same thing we see at the UMP, uh, where the, the members of the UMP are very uh, in favor of Nicolas Sarkozy, but sympathizers are not very fond of Sarkozy. And that's the same thing with Manuel Valls. Uh, he was a participant in the primaries for the Socialist uh, Party uh, in 2011, when François Hollande won. Manuel Valls only got like six or seven percent of the votes. That already shows that he's not very popular within the party. Uh, and the fact that um, the government is not uh, gaining any results yet in the fight against unemployment, in the fight for more uh, economic growth, shows that he's very controversial. He's been a prime minister for a little over a year now, and his results are not that good. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's of course, these congresses are always uh, showing the media that every goes, everything goes well, but uh, behind, the, the, behind the scenes, it's, it's, it's a big mess. You think it's, it's a big mess? I mean, it was not uh, a given that the congress would go rather uh, smoothly because there are some people within the Socialist Party, the MPs, who have voted against several key bills that the government has presented. And Manuel Valls, probably with the help of François Hollande, was able at least uh, to calm them down for now. Well, they have worked a lot, Hollande and Valls, previously, I mean, before the Congress. They have been working for months to get that result, that is, a very quiet uh, Congress, silencing the opposition in a way, giving them, uh, having such a, a text 
a motion, as they say, that was completely blurred, there was nothing in it, and they had it voted by the uh, members before, beforehand, and they came to the, to the um, Congress with a text that had been approved by almost two-thirds of the party. So they had, on this, uh, on, on this situation, they had a bit of calm. You shouldn't forget also that what Val said was absolutely the recipe to have uh, the, uh, the, the crowd on his side. He attacked Sarkozy most of the time, and he, 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 he searched for applause for the president. I mean, the man who brought them back to power, he, he, he deserves applause in their eyes. Plus, hitting on Sarkozy, you avoid all issues that could be controversial. That was, that's how they, they, they dealt with the count. But it remains, I'm always saying half of the party is not behind Valls. This is completely exaggerated, but at least 30% of the party, of the people who were seating literally in the, in, in the, in the room, in the hall, were against that line. Right. What do you make of uh, the op-ed that I mentioned of Arnaud Montebourg, who didn't go to uh, the Congress, who is obviously someone uh, who likes uh, to make uh, a splash, but is he speaking on behalf of those who were basically muffled by the strategy uh, laid out by Jean-Marc? I don't know if he's speaking for them, but he certainly has a point. Uh, he, he did very well at the primaries I just mentioned in 2011. He got around 18%, something like that. That's pretty substantial. Um, and he's also, together with Benoit Hamon, who is a former minister, um, they are, are basically the rebels within the party. But uh, they do they not were watch. part of the government. They were part of the government a couple of months ago, until the last summer, actually. And now they're, they're suddenly um, complaining about the government. So basically, a, a part of the, the policy that's now in place, it's also their responsibility. But res taking responsibility is not something politicians are used to do. Uh, and it's actually... I think uh, Montebourg, uh, he said farewell to politics, but a real politician can never say farewell to politics. So it's just a way of showing uh, that he still exists. And, and that's probably the reason why he chose this actually right wing paper to express his anger at the current uh, policy line. Uh, in terms of uh, François Hollande, so he's managed to sail through this uh, Congress. <coughs> Uh, obviously, the Socialist Party has been losing election after election. There are still the regional elections coming up in December. But do you think that clearly, without saying it, without even hinting at it, he's already in re-election campaign mode? Of course. He's, comp he's done everything to be able to run for, uh, for the Socialist Party. Except right getting good results and good polls. Yes, no, but I mean, in terms of party organization, he has dried the whole ground so that nothing can grow. He has no rival around. Even Manuel Valls is not a rival. Manuel Valls, he has to stick. You, you saw what he said at the Congress. He has to stick to the president. That's the constitution of the Fifth Republic. A prime minister would go against the president, who would take some distance, would be dead immediately. He has the Jupiter force in his hand, the president. He can, he can, he can just sack him like this, with a snap of the finger. So you have to stick to him. The only chance Valls has is if Hollande sees his chances, to, the odds too bad for himself, and he, he, he decides not to run. But for the moment, he does everything to give the impression he will be the candidate and the only candidate without any primaries. Because that, that seems to be the idea that uh, the socialists were so proud of creating this uh, open primary mm -hmm. uh, at the last election cycle, the system has now been adopted by the right-wing yeah. party, but now it seems that François Hollande would like to avoid this because he's the incumbent. Of course. And there yeah. shouldn't be a primary for an incumbent. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's, uh, well, it was the first time that there were primaries in French politics. It went very well, was very well organized. And, and suddenly everybody said, oh, well, the, the, it can work in France because it's very American, but it apparently works here as well. So Hollande... Now he's afraid that a lot of the p socialist party members will say, hey, let's do a, a, a primaries again because you're not doing very well. And if, we, if you're our candidate, then we'll, we'll sure to, be to lose the next election. So that's something that he will have to handle in the next couple of months because it takes a lot of time to organize primaries. So he, he doesn't have a lot of time. But I think he really wants to avoid at any price 
um, yeah, open primaries again in the Socialist Party because it would not be sure that he would win these primaries if they were held within the Socialist Party. If um, I, I get, uh, bounce on your argument, they are copying America all the way now. Yeah. An incumbent president yeah. has scarcely uh, the it's proof of, yeah. of going into primaries. I yeah. mean, uh, an incumbent president, if he runs again, there's nobody who dares to challenge him yeah. in America. Very, very quickly, there was a small controversy around yeah. this uh, Congress because the Prime Minister Manuel Valls took a private plane to attend the, the final of the Football uh, Champions League in Berlin and uh, there's controversy because uh, he used a plane and he said it was for business but it seems it was for pleasure. Yeah, it's not very smart because in times of austerity just uh, going to uh, Berlin for, for the evening to watch a football match, um, not very smart. He, he had some excuses the last what, 24 hours but now... Uh, we heard that his two kids were also on board. He took his two kids from Paris to go to Berlin. Uh, it could make, uh, it could give him a very difficult week to explain why he's uh, throwing uh, taxpayers' money out of the window while we, uh, while preaching austerity. So yeah, it could be a problem for him this week. You agree? Quickly. Yes, his posture as a moralist has been degraded this weekend through what he did. Okay, we'll see what happens uh, with this uh, story and more broadly with the socialist hope for a re-election in two years' time. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week here on Face Off.